When I was in service, I remember spending countless hours on humidifiers, whether it was the old scuttle drum type or possibly the atomizing versions, even the Honeywell True Steam. The one common theme that always came up on those service calls was what do I set the humidistat for? Hey, Chris Morin with HVAC Pro Blog back again. If you're a loyal reader of my blog over the years, you probably remember I did a short blog on the ASHRAE psychrometric comfort zone. Based on this time-tested theory, you can set the relative humidity anywhere between 30 to 60%. Per ACA Manual RS, they say for scorched forced air systems, you should set it somewhere between 35 to 45%. This will make sure no static is built up in the home. We've all experienced that when we go to reach for the light switch. But as you know, particularly these days, every home is different. In order to properly sense the relative humidity within the home, all of these humidifiers typically have their humidistats mounted in the return duct. This is a great central location to see what the mixture of air is coming back to the furnace. I remember years ago, okay, decades ago, that uh, we used to take the approach if there was condensation visible on the inside of your windows, then your relative humidity was too high. And this is what it'll tell you in most of the installation manuals for humidifiers, whole house humidifiers. Here's the problem, that's visible condensation. What's happening inside the walls? Not to scare you, as an HVAC service technician, you can only deal with what you see, right? If concealed condensation is a possible concern, you should really consult a building analyst. All right, so I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of math. If you didn't know, there is an equation to find out what the surface temperature is, and also using the psychrometric chart, what the dew point of the air is, or that device if you know the surface temperature. So this is similar to the old beer can cold effect, right? Not to get us into the refrigeration cycle, we all know that one. But if you were to take a can of soda, let's say, out of the refrigerator, the can is gonna be colder than the dew point of the air. And obviously the warmer the air, the more moisture that air can hold. So the warmer it is outside or in your space, the more likely a device is gonna be below the dew point of the air. So let's take an example for design temperatures and heating up here in New England. Typically we design to 70 degrees inside. That's the IECC and the IRC recommended design temp. You're only allowed to go plus or minus two degrees there. Couple that with design temperatures as low as zero outdoors. You can plug these numbers into the equation to see what the surface temperature is of a device, let's say a window, if you know what the U value is. So in my first example, I'm gonna walk through the math with a typical double pane wood frame window, a U value of 0.49. All right, so here's the equation. You're gonna to need to know the component U value, which we talked about that window, the design indoor temperature, remember that was 70 degrees, and your design outdoor temperature. In this example, zero. When you do the math, remember within parentheses first, so temperature inside minus temperature outside, and then you multiply the constant of 0.65 by the U value, by the result of the difference in temperature, and then you minus that from your design indoor temperature, and you'll get the coldest inside surface temperature you can have. Right. When you do the math, you can see that the temperature of the window when you reach design temperatures inside and outside is 48 degrees. Now, if you take that temperature on your psychrometric chart and you cross-reference it, you're gonna find that the maximum relative humidity in order to hit at that temperature or below for the dew point of the air is gonna be 45%. If the relative humidity goes above 45% in your space on a really cold day, then you're gonna get condensation on that window. And of course, condensation on a cold window definitely could freeze. That's typical older construction you might see here up in New England. Let's explore what happens with new homes and maybe a low E window. A low E window may have a U value closer to 0.36, much better when it comes to transfer of heat. And of course, we won't even get into solar heat gain coefficient. The same temperatures inside and outside result in a different surface temperature based on that different U value. 
because of that, the maximum relative humidity will change before you start getting condensation on the windows. Now, with the better U-value window, the relative humidity in your home could be as high as 60% and you won't have anything building up on the inside of that window when it comes to condensation. Keep in mind here, that's not every wall and door and floor. If technicians were to use the old tried and true method I talked about at the beginning of this vlog, you're gonna find there's a good chance there's gonna be condensation building up on many other devices because we can run the humidity as high as 60% in that new home before you start seeing it on the window. So you can see how old rules of thumb and old techniques don't match new construction. In fact, did you know just as much bacteria and fungus and mites grow above 60% relative humidity as they do below 30% relative humidity. People forget viruses thrive outside of that 30 to 60% recommendation. Of course, we won't just get mold and concealed condensation. We could also cause other issues in the home like damage to pianos or paintings or woodwork. So have you ever wondered why you start getting condensation on your ductwork up in an attic? Here's what I'd say. Figure out the R value and do the math. And if you do, the easiest way to make sure it doesn't happen is keep the ductwork within the building envelope. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris with HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential HVAC system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. See you next week.